it's always being a major factor that the technology park should be from form a hub for the new ideas exploits synergies and offer the potential for collaboration that's true uh, actually that's the purpose to make a specialized park where there are some companies they are doing research working out bringing good results for the community so that's uh, always in curry because it's not that you are only one in a building all are right left and you combine them there are seminars there are events they are sharing their own research with the other fellows and combined efforts are uh, in in a park we can feel standards are often startup companies whose founders are entrepreneurs who are keen to develop an idea into a commercially viable product so what are the startup startups so there are two words we can say one is seed up one is startup so if i am into a conceptual framework i is a seed up and if i have developed something i'm looking for um, some additional funds i can say it's a startup so uh, and then it will go to the mature one so startups are those who, who have a bit of money to register themselves come into the park such companies are generally funded by vcs venture capitals and has sufficient resources to sustain themselves throughout the design process design process you a very important point because startup mean that you are in a you are you didn't develop anything yet you have a good idea which was a seed up you put the seed up capital mostly from your pocket then you went to someone uh, who who is a venture capitalist he like your idea i give you say some money so now you have a bit of comfort to to convert your concept into a the meaningful design technology park also attract tenants who are subsidies of the major corporations who wish to draw up expertise from the local universities that's also very important for the national growth also you know some government they bring these big companies just to equip their own citizen with uh, uh you know uh, knowledge upgrade and transformation that's how it works okay then he says that as uh, so design team the freedom to work on sense specific research without the distraction associated with being based on cooperation main research and development center now i will show you a picture this picture shows that the building in technology parks are generally intended for sole occupancy by individual tenants they are generally larger spaces that are designed to be kept and adopted to meet a variety of different needs as we discussed that there might be larger companies they come and they say look we want a specific kind of construction and specific type of uh, building so they are flexible for it for example an engineering laboratory might re- require sufficient space to construct a full size prototype vehicle like in uh, say in uae the plant for boeing boeing is manufacturing its part in uae so uh, of course boeing require space so uh, you so this park has that flexibility that they can accommodate these spaces for the people so this is what he says now next is most tenant require a steady and reliable electrical supplies which is also you know it's is a mandatory now internet high speed internet uh, electricity supply and water supply these are the basic things that everyone should know and but because it's a tech park so maybe i am inventing a thing which require triple of the electricity than to a normal tenant so how they handle that scenario is most tenant require a steady and reliable electrical supplies that does not have usual fluctuation because if you have fluctuation it's a science park technology park so your equipments can uh, burn and because of low and high voltage coming so some tenants use sensitive electric equipment that would be damaged 
by any electrical spikes up and downs while other operate equipment that draw a significant electrical current far in excess of that available from standard electricity this i told you that some depending on what kind of company you are what kind of research you are doing maybe you need more electricity more heavy electricity um, some don't need it that way so how technology uh, park so technology park need to invest in maintaining a steady supply of electricity internet on all that technology must invest heavily in infrastructure ensuring that the technology park as a whole has sufficient electrical power and also distributing it safely across the campus this require more than just installing electrical cables it's necessary to fit and maintain equipment that prevents changes to voltage and current when a large item of equipment located in the technology park is switched off or on here uh, i just while reading i feel that he can ask me a question about health safety and environment because it's true if you are a strategic uh, a case study student or if you are a strategic manager you can't ignore environment health safety right so what information i can feel it's uh, it's more about uh, these points apart from electricity technology park has to take account of several key requirements as i told you high speed data links so often crucial because you are doing research you are connected to your head offices you are doing video conferencing you need uh, hd quality so that's the first point high speed data second is site security is very very important if you go media city internet city masdar city uh, king abdullah city for example there is a very secure way to enter and come you cannot even um, take out your desk from the office without the approval of the park so security is very important because tenants may be working on development of new products using designs that are commercially sensitive so hackers will be in the Uh, so physical security and i can link it with the cyber security also because if someone can hack your server so your all sensitive information can go here and there in some cases there would be a wider security issues for example some tenants might be working on government contracts very very important like say this uh, i was training a department last year uh, electrical security department it covers ue all the security so very sensitive you know uh, very strict confidentiality so because it's for the safety of the uh, of the citizen and the government so so tech park has need to be have an extra uh, web security cyber security and physical security also for example some tenants may be working on government when this okay tenants generally require there to be security patrols and closed circuit televisions monitoring the campus with the security office monitoring building alarms and calling the emergency services in the event of alarm soundings so who is best um, in this is of course uh, ua is the perfect in this Uh, high surveillance cameras full security no such it so that's mandatory for any park that he uh, is emphasizing on some tenants require administrative and other business service support so they can focus their attention on research and development and uh, for example many technology park has centralized telephone answering services with operator who pick up the call to the tenant number giving the tenant business name and the referring calls so it's a pure because it's like if if you heard about regis business centers they does the same i mean if i take a office in these business centers 
See, if you call me, um, the, the common reception was not my employee, but the employee of the park. They answer, they try to pose that yes, you know, and then they transfer the line to my mobile or whatever. So this is also a very growing feature that a park should have a common services, you know, a common area, telephone line, fax service, internet, email services. Tenants are also generally keen to ensure that their staff find it convenient to work on the site. One major issue is the availability of sufficient car parking. So if you see all the better parks, they have a food court where employees can go, partners can go and eat their lunch, breakfast, teas, conference halls. Where, where the tenants can arrange a conference or conferences, events, and parking is really, really in New York, in say the, the developed countries, parking is a big issue. You don't get parts, so uh, parking, so sufficient car parking to ensure that the staff can park easily, regardless of the time of the day. It's also helpful if there are facilities to secure bicycles and frequently bus services because in Europe, in UK, in America, you know, cycling is also a mode of uh, transportation. So, so we need to secure the bikes. I mean, otherwise anyone can take your bike. So we need to secure it. Frequently bus service, bus service should come. So if you ever visited Expo 2020 site, uh, there are bus stops and bus uh, stops every stop after 10 minutes. So this is really important nowadays that you should have a local bus transport hubs and airports. Yeah, so moving forward, some ma many technology parks offer small and medium sized spaces. Uh, this is we already discussed, I told you that uh, there will be a larger companies like Microsoft. They can come take five floors. That's fine. But there might be one person company, three person company. Uh, they feel that if they are inside the tech, there will be a lot of uh, support from the tech park. So they might have small, medium spaces. Uh, uh, like, uh, as I told you, even for a shared desk, uh, the business model that is very common nowadays for uh, premises uh, taking many so it can be adopted also configured to meet the need of the tenants who do not require sole occupancy of the laboratory building these are smaller spaces are popular with companies that create design using software testing the results using computer simulations so mostly startups you can say because they can't afford to be uh, their own big space offices. So they are looking for compact, smart solutions. Many technology parks create subdividing one or more of their building into separate units, offering a convenient location and a good physical security. These spaces are often popular with startups who can design products using computer-aided design. If necessary, they can use secure electronic communication, encryption. Now here we have to use a bit of IT, how to convert data into a code, public encryption, private encryption. This is what we will discuss. And uh, who can build their prototypes using 3D printing technology. 3D printing technology knowledge is important. Uh, nowadays it is growing. People are um, uh, using it in a lot of places. So where, what are the advantages, disadvantages, very important to know. Technology parks generally attracts a wide range of tenants. So this is, you give a breakup. So you can see that uh, ICT, which is information and computer technology, sound a bigger portion. Engineering, computer and hardware uh, is sound big one. Consulting, biotech, little smaller than yeah, ICT, electronics. So these are the tenants uh, of those areas which we build up. So, and uh, so these are very simple to understand what is biotechnology, what is engineering, computer, but consulting, he explained to you that the consulting refers to those tenants 
who are not doing themselves but they are selling the research of the others third parties for example uh, say uh, there is someone a company in uh, silicon valley in us so they open a company in media city internet city uh, because they want to sell the technology and there is someone sitting in that park uh, giving a local presence so that's a good idea they do not necessarily aim to work for their fellow tenants although the large number of nearby business with an interest in research may create a useful local market moving forward we have some tenants activities can go beyond research and development so means they are into manufacturing for example limited manufacture and sale of parts and component is possible so you have bigger spaces where you can manufacture you can an electronic company might have a clean room in its building that is used to manufacture limited quantities of products for sale to third parties uh, the the rents charged by technology park means that it is not cost effective to conduct mass manufacturing there this is true like any uh I, lastly i went pakistan i visited a place uh, it was a electrical uh, manufacturing facility and they were actually making samsung's uh, circuit board all circuit board in pakistan and which people use it you know in mobiles and in uh, other uh, devices so it's truly not uh, a good option to have a huge stake Uh, to take uh, these spaces from technology park but you can do a limited one that will be more cost effective so again we have to see that what are the advantages disadvantages uh, cost efficiency effectiveness uh, this also be a part of thinking after reading this information but the infrastructure and the availability of the expertise might encourage the tenant to offer fabrication and prototype services what is prototype services how it helps what are the advantages of poor prototype what is the disadvantages this also we will study this is the knowledge we need but prototype means that making a similar unit before a mass production in order to test and run adland has 27 technology parks spread across the country these vary in size some being little more than the large some are big some are small depending what space they have other are built in large campus spaces so they are bigger units uh, prospective tenants are often uh, attracted by the possibility of collaborating with other tenants based on the technology park there is always a big temptation why i need to go in uh, knowledge village uh, media city internet city masdar city silicon valley is because uh, my next door tenant can be my uh, customer uh, because we are from one technology suppose samsung is a brand who sell mobile but they don't manufacture manufacturer are the vendors so if i am a vendor who can get a value and i get next door my samsung they meet me in exhibition events uh, while i go washroom while i go to the food corner so it will be a amazing um, opportunity for me to discuss these things with them such collaboration can take many different forms including direct provision of the paid services there can be also natural synergies such as tenant who is engaged in the development of batteries to the electrical vehicle hoping to collaborate with other tenants who are engaged in vehicle designs this is i told you like uh, this is called vertical and horizontal integrations so you should know that what does it mean how it works what is the advantages disadvantages even when commercial uh, confidence makes it difficult to collaborate directly tenants often benefit for being associated with a location that is attractive to potentially interested parties such as designer job applicants or professional conducts i interview sometime candidate or they say we want to work in difc company 
because they are so excited from DIFC, Internet City, Media City, Knowledge Village. Uh, this is the power of a uh, park that imp- uh, job applicant want to come there, companies want to come there. Uh, because it's create an atmosphere and you get internal businesses. Uh, even he says, if you don't get a business, still you can say that we are a Silicon Valley company. Uh, so people are writing, we are Silicon. So this uh, this really add a branding to your, uh, uh, and with a lot of other advantages, of course. Now we are going into a bit of technical uh, information. So he says that the Knowledge City Technology Park, which is KCTP, was founded in 1986 by Adelaide Capital City University. Uh, KCTP owns site comprising 24 hectares of land and 18 buildings with a total of 320 thousand square meters of floor space. So it looks nice, attractive, big one. Um, Capital City floated KCTP in 1999. So here I can see there is a gap. 1986 it was founding and 1999 they float. Floated means they went to the stock exchange you know, first we go to a primary market, we sell the share, then the secondary market, we resell them, and then uh, private investors can buy and sell. So here I can think uh, different things that what was the what was pushing them to be floating, what it brings to them. So I know that if you float uh, a share, so you get a wider access to the pool of investor, you know, maybe I know 10 investors before, but when I go to the stock exchange is open to the whole world. Like uh, I'll give you example of a company called NIO, N-I-O. Uh, it's a EV company, electrical vehicle company. Its share was $9 uh, four months, three months before. When I predict it will go 70. Now it is, I think 50. So uh, why, it was a small Chinese company, but they registered in NASDAQ. So when they register in NASDAQ, uh, they get a lot of uh, uh, institutional and uh, private investor and their share. In three months, it's more than, uh, say, four or 500% up. So there are advantages to be in, uh, uh, in uh, going public uh, or listed. But of course, there are disadvantages in terms of your uh, lose of control. And in in certain developed countries, uh, when you issue equity, you have to pay a huge cost of shareholders, uh, like as a floating cost, underwriter, lawyer, accountant, uh, SCC, Securities Exchange Commission, you know, whatever is the regulator you have to pay for. So that's what we will see, possible questions, uh, how it works. University retain 20% share. They have 20, so 80% is not with them. Uh, the remainder of the share being freely traded. So means they have a minority share holding as a 20%. Flotation was motivated by university desire to raise funds and to free KCTP to provide a sustainable commercial boot boost to country's technology part. So here he shows that, that they want to make it as a standalone company uh, who is uh, self-sufficient. Maybe they they were not able to sustain or um, it, it was not growing. So they, these are the strategic decisions taken in 1999. Uh, universities has developed uh, good links to. Then he says that since the flotation KCTP, because 80% shares you bought, you sold, so you got a lot of money coming in the park. So we can see that they have significantly improved its infrastructure, enabling it to achieve a very high occupancy rate. 
um, means that um, when you provide a good infrastructure, good brand reputation, people, tenants will come. So their uh, occupancy rate was really good, which shows their success of the strategic vision ecosystem. University has developed good links to many of the KCTP tenants, which uh, serve a very good pro purpose that university and the park and university at the park tenants. So again, it's a win-win solution, which has led to commercial funding of university research project, a large number of work experience opportunities for undergraduate and postgraduate student in Horizon, as well as employment opportunity for graduation. That's the ultimate purpose of a, a park that uh, bring research, bring um, commercial success, uh, bring occupancy of the real estate that they have. So the KCTP campus is located uh, with a 30 minutes drive from Capital City University, which is also a close proximity. It has its own subsidized bus service, means that you pay less to sit in that bus, which is a good feature linking KCTP campus to the university and business district. 